Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Shalom to the twelve tribes at Yasha Allah. Giving, of course, all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh Baha Shema Mashak Bumalak Yabashah. That's all praises, honor, glorification unto the Father whose name is Yahweh. Uh, in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, who the world refers to as Jesus Christ, and he is the Savior of the nation of Israel. All right, Shalom, Shalom. All right, so, hey, stop saying that you're um starving, all right, because we haven't seen anything yet. We have not seen anything yet, all right? We have not experienced um, anything yet, anything to a very, very uh, 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 high extreme. Us that live in Babylon the Great, all right? Because Babylon the Great, like it says in the book of, um, uh, it's lucky. Let me go to this real quick. Isaiah chapter 47, just thought it up. Isaiah 47. All right. Let's go to this. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, or daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. So why did I bring this up? I brought this up because, you know, this place called America, this place called the United States, right, is known as Babylon the Great, according to the Bible, right? It says that what? That it's a virgin daughter, right? And we already know America is personified as a woman anyway, right? But the Lord also calls this, this, this nation a whore, right? When you read the book of Revelation, the 17th chapter, all right? But the Lord is also calling America, O oh, virgin daughter. Why? Because America has, is, is, hasn't been touched, all right? It hasn't been touched because um, on a carnal level, America has never been invaded like these other nations, right? It's never been, uh, uh, had two nuclear bombs dropped on them like they did the, the Japanese, the Ammonites, you know, America has never been invaded, like how America invaded uh, Germany, right? Or like how America invaded these various nations, right? It that that never happened to America on a grand scale, right? So that's why the the Most High is calling it a virgin daughter, right? And so, um, and also America has never uh, um um suffered from a great famine, right? To a certain extent in which a lot of people are taken out, taken out the way. Yeah, you went through a little famine in the 1920s, the Great Depression. Yeah, you might have went through a little shortage of food in the, uh, uh, in the 1800s, right? Um, I forgot what that was called, but it was a certain era in which uh, this president, in which America did, uh, America's economy was very, very low. And, you know, a lot of uh, people didn't have enough food. You know, yeah, you might have had that, but this famine that's coming, because we know that famine is coming. Let's go to the book of Matthew real quick. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse uh, 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So a real famine is coming to this earth, man. Real famine is coming to this, to a neighborhood near you. A famine is coming to your neighborhood, right? And what is a famine? A famine is a lack of food and water. It's things that's necessary for our survival, right? Remember, like Job said, um, I've seen the words of the Most High more than my necessary food. So food is necessary for your body, right? And we eat to live, not live to eat, right? And so um, knowing that food is necessary, food and drink is necessary for your body, right? Food and water. Um, without that, you're going to die and you're going to suffer from a miserable, miserable death if you don't get those things, right? If you don't eat, if you don't drink enough, right? We understand this. So, and knowing this, knowing the, the extremities of a famine, we should be, what? Preparing ourselves, right? Now, we're not saying that you should stock up on food like these damn doomsday preppers, right? Because we know that the Lord... If you are under the shadow of the Almighty, like it says in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 91, Psalms 91 and 1, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So if you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, A, he's going to protect you in, in that day of famine, 
Right, let's go to the book of Job, chapter 5. And the elect, they'll be cool during famine, right? Let's go to Job, chapter 5, verse 20. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Now, this is not the case for every single brother, every single sister, right? That might believe in the Most High, right? And Yahweh Shah. This may not be the case for every brother and sister that's in this truth, right? This, not be, this might not be the case, right? But the elect, hey, there's a certain number of people that will be cool during famine, you know? In famine, he shall redeem thee from death, meaning that the Lord is going to give you food during famine, right? Like how it says in the book of Isaiah, the 65th chapter. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 13, all right? Isaiah chapter 65, verse 13. There, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. See that? The Most High said, my servants shall eat, but you, you're going to be hungry. And who is the Most High talking to? Those that's not his servants, right? He said, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed, right? A lot of people, they're going to be thirsty and faint and, and uh, uh, hungry in the day of the Lord because famines are coming, all right? Famines is coming. And you know how people say, and Jake says, you know, oh, I'm starving, you know? Some people might even say I'm famished, which is an archaic kind of way of expression and also a British form of saying that I'm hungry, right? But starving. This word is used a lot, starving, right? Should we really say that we're we're starving? Because let's read the definition. It says suffering from suffering or dying from hunger. We never experienced this. We never we never experienced dying from hunger, right? We're very suffering from hunger. You know, Jake he hasn't eaten in two hours. Oh, I'm starving. Jake, you're not starving, all right? Eve, she hasn't eaten in damn five hours or four hours. Oh, I'm starving. You're not starving. You're not dying from hunger. But guess what? In, in the famine that's coming, you might actually die from hunger if you don't repent and turn back onto the most high. Right? That's that's serious. You know what I'm saying? And like, of course, you got um, other definitions. You got the informal. I want to read this one real quick. You got the informal. Feel very hungry. So this is the the the, the definition that is used a lot, typically, when um, people are saying that they're starving. You know, it's an informal way of saying, I'm, I feel very hungry. But we know that the real definition, right, and connotation of starving is negative, right? When, when you're starving, that's not good, right? Unless, you know, you're fasting and afflicting yourself onto the most high, right? Then that's righteous. But if you're starving, that means you're near your death, Right? That means you're near your death. Like it says, cause a person or an animal to suffer severely to or die from hunger. See that? Severely. And let's pull up some uh, uh, um, pictures real quick. All right? That's lucky. So this is starving right here, man. This is people in a famine right here. Right? And this has never happened to America. This certain extent of a famine never happened to America. Right? This, this never came to America, but it's coming. You know, the Kushites, you know, the Ethiopians, they, you know, they go through a famine, you know, like every other year. But that's that that famine is coming to America, man, in a swift way. You know, we're not going to be able to eat our favorite foods. We're not going to be able to go to damn Wendy's. You're not going to be able to go to IHOP, Denny's. You're not going to be able to open the refrigerator and get you some cake late at night. That is coming to an end, right? That is coming to an end, a swift end. Because remember, in, even in a World War III, even in a World War, right? Wars, they cause a lot, right? Wars, they cost a lot. And so knowing that wars cost a lot, if your government or so like if your nation, you know, America, but, you know, just in a, in a, in a sense of um, how we live in this country, right? If your country doesn't have enough money in its economy, economy, then what's coming? Famine, man. Famine. Because they, they're not able to buy stuff, right? And so with the economy going down, then you also have famine rising up, all right? Those go hand in hand. 
So even in World War III, we don't know what's going to cause the famine. Because, you know, you got locusts as well, right? You got locusts, all right? Locusts, you know, you have locusts throughout the earth, right? Now, we don't know what's going to cause the famine. The Lord might, you know, bring the locusts to America, like how he did to ancient Egypt, and cause all the crops to be eaten, right? Remember, if your crops are being eaten, if the vegetation is being eaten, right, then what are you going to eat, right? What are you going to eat then? If all the vegetation is, is eaten, then what are you going to eat? That's going to cause a famine right there, right? That's going to cause a, a severe lack of food and water, right? So this famine that's coming, it's no joke, man, right? It's no joke. How are you, how are you going to prepare for this, right? You know, uh, um, dying by hunger is one of the worst ways to die, man, aside from being drowned, right? Let's get this precept. It's a book of Lamentations, chapter 4. And by the way, you can eat locusts. That's clean, right? <laughs> uh, Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 9. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For th these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. So it's better for you, you know, to be shot in the head, to be a uh, 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 shot in the belly, you know, to be stabbed, even get your head chopped off. That's a mercy. That's a a, a a a merciful death. But guess what? When 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 the uh, someone really hates you, right? A nation really hates you. That nation would starve the other nation out, right? Just like how he, they did. They used to uh, uh slaki. They um uh, um wanted to do us, right? During the time of Judith, these uh, uh Babylonians, the Edomites, and Moabites came together. And they were, uh, um, um, for lack of better terms, they were um, poisoning our water system. So we couldn't get any clean water, right? So that's one way to kill off a people. And they try to starve us out, man. But the Most High delivered us, all right? And he can deliver you in that day if you trust in him, right? Let me get this precept. It's a book of Proverbs. Chapter, oh, so lucky, right? Hold on, con, con. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 22, right? The Wadi Yahweh it says, Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save you. You see that? So, so the scripture is saying, Wait on the Lord, and he shall save you. Straight like that, man. You know, and the Most High is not a man that he should lie, right? In in the book of Titus, right? Let's get this Titus chapter one, and verse two. In hope of in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So the Most High is not going to sit up here and lie. He doesn't have anything to lie about or lie for, right? He's the Most High, right? So let's go back to this lamentation chapter four verse nine. They that be slain with the sword is better than or better than they that be slain with hunger. Right. So, you know, you know, it's, it's better for you to be shot in the damn head than to than, than to uh, go for four days or four, five days without food. Because remember, uh, um, having a lack of food, being in a famine not only affects you uh, uh, physically, but also if it affects you uh, uh, psychic, uh, um, affects your uh, brain. Right. It affects your brain and you start to uh, hallucinate. You start to see delusions, you know, you start to look at your friend and think that he's a damn hot dog like the cartoons, you know. So the, these things actually happen. You know, you turn like a damn skeleton, you lose all your body mass. And, and, and uh, um, when you're going through a famine and when you don't, won't, don't have enough uh, food and water, your body starts to eat itself. Right. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away. You just sitting there pining away. You may not even have enough energy to lift up your hand to uh, stray away a fly or a bug that's crawling on your face. Right? It says stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. And you want, you, you're desiring to eat a damn apple, to eat anything. But you can't get anything. Why? Because it's a damn famine. And you didn't want to listen unto the Lord. 
and you didn't want to trust in the Lord and you didn't want to pray. You didn't want to keep the commandments. You didn't want to hearken. Now you sitting here rethinking your whole life over trying to repent. But the Most High is not going to listen to you in that day. Right. Most High is not going to listen to you. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, the first chapter. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter one. In verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. You see that? You're not going to find the most on that day if you're not finding him, if you're not getting with him right now. Right? All right? So... We have to um, remember the extremities of a famine, man, right? We always have to remember about the extremities of a famine because the pestilence alone is bad. That's disease, right? We've seen what the Mosai did with the damn so-called Black Plague. We've seen what the Mosai is doing with the damn um, uh, um, virus, right? We see what the Mosai is doing with um, uh, um, all these different viruses, right? But Khan, and, and you know, when you get the Eden, man, hey, this is Jake. Right? This is Jake after not eating for two hours. Right? That's Jake. This is Eve for not, after not, you know, eating for damn uh, an hour. Right? So how much more when you haven't eaten in a day? How much more when you haven't eaten in two days? Right? See that? So people idolize food too, you know, making food their idol, right? You got to eat all the time. And, and this is the, also the importance of famine. It's like the importance of, of fasting as well to get your body prepared for this kind of stuff, right? A man that, that, that's used to fa uh, fasting, you know, when, when all hell breaks loose, he's going to be the main one on the go, you know? Nothing, nothing too much going on because, you know, he's used to this, this kind of thing. He's used to not eating for a day, for two days, right? He's used to that. Well, well how, about, how about people that's in a world that never fast, right? How about these people that just eat constantly, right? They're not going to make it, right? So with that, I'd like to give all on the glory and praise unto Yahweh. Lord willing, this is edifying. Remember the extremities of a famine and do everything that you can to get delivered from these times. All right? Call on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shalom all.